for more than one reason, Bunny. In the first place, we are broke. Not as broke as all that. We must practice economy. And a free dinner is not to be despised. In the second place, the International Sporting Club have honoured me by inviting me. It will be churlish to refuse. Yes, I know, but I feel more like a music hall than supper at Willis's. And honoured not only me, but you, Mr. A.J. Raffles, and guest. I am proud to be their guest. You should be proud to be mine. Well, of course I am. It goes without saying. But... But what? You monster of ingratitude. Oh, Raffles, don't say that, even in jest. I am far from jesting. I deliberately chose you to be my companion. Oh, right. Deliberately and with the utmost care? Only because the International Sporting Club doesn't allow women. As it happens. As it happens. Uh -huh. And because there'll be lots of boring speeches, you thought I could put up with them without yawning too obviously. No! Then why? The real reason for taking you tonight is that you, my dear Bunny, are my partner in crime. Is it crime tonight? No, not tonight. Oh, that's something. But you are no more a natural-born criminal than I am. You need to have your criminal tendencies refreshed from time to time. You need to have your feelings of greed and envy sharpened, whetted like a knife. Do I? And the International Sporting Club is the perfect place to do it. Everyone there is purple with wealth, dripping with masculine jewellery. They bathe in Napoleon brandy. They smoke cigars as long as your arm. They're the revolutionist's dream of the undeserving rich. And you hope to find a suitable victim among them? I hope to make you as eager for loot as I am. Raffles, you are incorrigible. The loot should turn out to be not only an opportunity, but also a challenge. Ah, my dear Bunny, that would be perfect. Ah, uh, 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 Raffles. I say, uh, Raffles. Who's that? Old Speaker Morrison. Not a bad chap. What's he want? Come over here. What for? I want to introduce you. Might be an opportunity or a challenge. Maybe he doesn't want to be introduced. Oh, nonsense. Of course he does. Splendid chap. You'll like him. What's his line? Line? Oh, you mean his game? Yeah, I guess so. He's a cricketer. Uh, one of our best. What's that game again? Uh, cricket. Uh, we play it in the summer. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Hello, Swigger. Did you want me? Uh, yes. I uh, want to introduce you. Uh, Barney Maguire, heavyweight champion of the United States. Uh, Mr. Raffles, yeah. the famous cricketer. How do you do, Maguire? Nice to meet you, Mr. Raffles. Great honor to bring two such sportsmen together. Indeed. You play cricket, Mr. Raffles? Yes, I do. Uh, that's that game with uh, long-handed mallets. Hoops. Uh, no, no. Uh, it... No, the, um, the mallets are only for when we play it on horseback. <laughs> the usual game is much more like your baseball. Baseball, huh? Yes, except there's more skill in it. Uh, how do you figure that? Uh, ah, well, I'm a pitcher. Now, I can not only make the ball curve either way, but we usually make the ball hit the ground and turn either way without altering our action when we throw it. Don't say. How do you do that? Ah. Look, there's this fellow who plays for Middlesex with me. He's invented what we call a bosey or a googly. You see, you hold the ball like... I say, magnificent watch chain. You like my watch chain, huh? You ain't seen nothing yet. I don't know how much you make out of playing cricket, Mr. Raffles, but I'll lay it in one half of what I make out of boxing. No one quarter, no one tenth, no one hundredth. Geez, I knew this was a poor country, but he is paid as bad as that. I'm an amateur, Maguire. I'm paid nothing at all. And what the hell do you do it for? Partly for love of the game. You're crazy. Hey, Jethro, huh? do you hear that? What? This guy's a big international sportsman and says he doesn't make anything out of it. He's crazy. <laughs> He's plum loco. Jethro's my secretary. He knows what I make. I sure do. How much would you put of that, Jethro? Well, it ain't peanuts. It certainly ain't. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Raffles. Take the load off your feet. And your friend out there. Have a drink. What'll it be? Scotch whiskey? Please. And your friend? Yes, thanks. The greatest invention your country ever dreamed up. Scotland. Well, that's somewhere in England, ain't it? You're Irish yourself, Maguire, I take it. Sod shanty Irish my grandparents were. Came to New York in the famine of 1840. I only wish they could see me now. I haven't done so bad for a boy from the wrong side of the tracks. You. Yeah, you did real good, Barney. I'm the greatest fighter in the world, that's all. That's why they give me all these things, to say so. To say it. I'm the greatest fighter in the world. Take a look at this, Mr. Raffles. And your friend. Presented to me by the state of Nevada when I fought in a little town called Goldfield there. There, it says it right across the back. 
present it to the greatest fighter in the world, Barney McGuire, doesn't it? It certainly does. Well, I guess that proves it. I guess it does. Ain't nobody denies it. The citizens of Sacramento gave me this. Sacramento. That's the capital city of California. Gold rush town. This here's a gold brick made from their very own gold dust. Yes. Valuable. Ain't so much the value. It's the sentiment behind it. You know what I mean? Yes. I always feel the same. But when it comes to value in terms of hard cash, well, I guess this is my most valuable possession. And I treasure it the most in sentimental value, too. May I see? If you want to. I'd be most interested. I don't usually let anybody else handle it. Oh, I understand. I'd, I'd feel the same if it were mine. Why, it's you. Silver statuette done of me by a famous sculptor. Oh, yeah. Yes, and I can see it must have been. Presented to me by the Fisticuff Club of New York. On occasion, it might be made an honorary member of the club. The Fisticuff Club is the most famous sporting club in New York. Yes, sir. Uh, You've heard of it, I guess. Yes, of course. I wonder, may I give it to Bonnie to hold for a moment? He'll be very careful. Okay. I just want him to feel how much weight of silver there is in it. Yes, I do. It'll be worth a small fortune, even melted down. Ain't nobody gonna melt that statue down. There it is, and there it stays. But don't you keep it in a safe, and these other things too? I mean, they're worth so much money. I don't like them in safes, I like to look at them. I earned them, and now I want the pleasure of enjoying them. So they must be a terrible to temptation to burglars, cracksmen. They are that. Well, aren't you afraid? <laughs> I mean, that somebody might try to steal them. <sighs> Mr. Raffles, I got a trap to catch the cleverest cracksman alive. Oh, yes, what? That's my secret. Oh, I know, you lie in wait behind the curtain. Nope. And rush out and grab them with your bare hands. I mean, I ain't tell her. <laughs> Can you guess, Bunny? I imagine... Imagine what you like, young man. I ain't telling you nor anybody else. Your secret would be perfectly safe with us. We're gentlemen. That's what makes you so dangerous. What do you mean? Well, you wouldn't think of doing anything crooked yourself, so you wouldn't suspect anybody else of being crooked. You wouldn't see any harm in saying, did I tell you what Barney McGuire told me the other night? And out it comes. Yes, you're quite right, McGuire. That's exactly the sort of thing we might say. You take my advice, don't you dream of telling us. It's a risk, and you can't afford to take risks. I can, but I ain't gonna. I'll drink to that. Well, I... Would, but my glass is empty. Have some more whiskey. Have some more, Mr. Raffles. I see. And your friend. I don't know what his name is, but no one's going to go away from Barney McGuire's house without having all the drink they wanted. No, I won't, thanks. You will. If you insist. I insist. Thank you very much. There's nothing I like better than company when I'm drinking. Well, have a toast. We'll drink to Barney McGuire. Barney McGuire. And success in his fight next week. Success. Success in his fight. You're fighting next week, are you? Fighting the British champion. Ah. Can't remember what his name is. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, all right, this, while you're in training? Mr. Raffles, to fight an Englishman, I don't go into training. <laughs> <laughs> really? Say, I like you, Raffles. You're a nice guy. Other Englishmen I've met would have been offended by that remark. Would they? I want you to know you can come around here any time you like, and I'll give you a drink. I will. Any hour of the day or night. I accept your invitation for any hour of the day or night. That's great. And my friend Bunny, too? And your friend Bunny, too? You said my friend Bunny, too, and he agreed. I just said it for something to stay. Like, how do you do? Very well, thank you. There was no real meaning in it. But you said it. And because I said it, I have to take it with me. You may need me. I've worked out what I'm going to do, and I should be better off on my own. You think I may get hurt? I think one of us getting hurt is enough. But I can help you with that big brute. If it comes to a stand-up fight... I boxed at school, you know. Believe me, Bunny, one blow from Barney, and I should be past all helping. But I mean to defeat him not by strength, but by cunning. How? He's a boxer. I'm a slow bowler. Every man to his trade. You don't want to tell me how. 
I just tell you that I'm determined to get my own back on that monstrous ape on behalf of my fellow countrymen. He had the nerve to say that other Englishmen would have been offended by his remark. Yes, they certainly would. And I was offended too. And I shall have his gold brick and his silver statue for that. You just see if I don't. Yes, I thought that was the point at which you decided to have them. Bunny. Knowing me as you do, would you say that I was the cleverest cracksman alive? Without a doubt. Are you sure of that? No one to touch you. Barney Maguire says he has a trap to catch the cleverest cracksman alive. What do you suppose it is? Hmm? Uh, I shall have to find out on Friday. Friday you're going to do it? Yes. Well, you know, I don't care much for Friday, but Thursday's his fight. Why not then? Oh, don't be an ass. If he's out fighting on Thursday, he's about to have someone guarding his prized possessions. And judging by the way he drinks whiskey before a fight, afterwards, whether celebrating or recovering, he'll drink even more. If you're off his guard, I doubt he'll be capable of protecting his possessions. Hope to God he loses. Though I've got a bet on him to win. Unpatriotic. No, not in least. I wouldn't dream of being. You know I wouldn't. It's just that old Swigger Morrison was going on about how good our chap is, and I said I thought Barney looked the stronger of the two, and before I knew where I was, I had a bet on my hands. How much for? Not money. The loser has to send the winner a dinner at his club. <laughs> well, you'll get a very liquid dinner if you win. Yes, I've heard so. When's it to be? Friday, the night after the fight. Friday? So you couldn't have come with me after all? I hadn't realised. It's the same day. How perfectly splendid. A great deal is going to happen on Friday. Of course I admire him. Admire all pugilists. But I, I, I never thought that Rascal had a chance, you know. Didn't you? Well... Drinks too much for a start, like all these Yanks. Ruin his constitution going on like that. Very bad for a fighter. Whereas our chap, you see, teetotal. Good. Oh, yes. Good chap. Fit as a fiddle. Pity he lost. What's your friend Raffles doing these days? He's around, around London. Uh, uh, thought perhaps he might date to come and join us. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, wondered if he was doing anything tonight. No, 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 he's not. Just thought he might like to. No. Good chap with a drink. What's he doing tonight? I don't know exactly.
Splendid night. Oh, yes. <laughs> if, you, if you can't win a bet, the next best thing is to be a loser. Oh, yes. What? That's uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, oh. Let's go, let's go. Uh, goodbye, old man. Oh. And thank you. Goodbye, sir. <laughs> and thank you very much. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> No, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, no, sir, there must be the right way around. <laughs> Not thank you. <laughs> thank me. <laughs> 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 Hello? Uh, sir, you Bunny? Yes. Are you Raffles? Bunny? Uh, oh, watch quick. Raffles? What's happened? What's happened? Uh, happened things extraordinary things. He's, well, I'll come at once. Where are you? McGuire. Where's McGuire? Half Moon Street. Yes, yes, I know where it is. Where's he? Is he there? No, he's not here. Do you want me to bring anything or do anything? Hasn't come in yet. Raffles, what's the matter? Yes, I'm coming. What's the matter? Uh, caught. What do you say? Uh, uh, caught in the trap. Just as he said, sir. It was me right now. Caught. Raffles? Raffles? See the door better than me. And hurry up about it. I'm getting cold standing here. Well, I gotta get it the right way up. That's right. Uh, hey! But hey, well, it's open. Open? What tarnation. Put him up or I'll smash in a little piece of Come on, Mr. Bob, don't you remember me? I came around here with Raffles the other night. You must remember Raffles if you don't remember me. Raffles? That the guy who played cricket? He's a Cricketer. Well, I know that. Everybody knows that. Yeah, that's right. Yes, well, I'm his friend, and, and I came here with him. What are you doing here now? Well, you said we could look you up any time we liked, any hour of the day or night. That's so, Barney. Yes. I guess he took you at your word. Yes, I did. That's right. You don't say. <laughs> well, I took you for some darn crook. <laughs> if you hadn't spoken up slick like that, I would have bust your face in. Oh, lucky I did. Lucky for you. Yes. Well, where's your friend, Raffles? Oh. Well, I expected to find him here. Here? Yes, he, he said he was round at Barney Maguire's. Well, did he break open the door, or did you? No, neither. No, I don't suppose he came here at all. Or if he did, he, he probably went away again. Gee, ask that. I locked that door and put the key in my pocket. There's a light on now where there wasn't before. Talk about crooks, eh? Ladies and gentlemen, you lay around where you are while I see if we caught. Walk up and 
see one of their blamed British crooks laid as low as the carpet and nailed as tight. That's dandy, Barney. Jethro, yeah. you shut the front door so the draft don't get in. Come right in, Flory, and see what happens to critters that try to rob me. Come right in, young man, and see for the second time in two days America has come out on top. Look at him. Real homegrown, low-down Whitechapel. Blessed if our Bowery boys ain't cock angels to scum like this. Oh, he does look an ugly specimen. And dirty, too. Ah, uh, you build rat. I wouldn't soil my knuckles in your filthy face. But if I had my heavy boots on now, I'd kick the soul out of your carcass for two cents. Now, he's not worth spoiling your shoe lever on. Who is he? Blamed if I know. One of your crooks from the uh, East End, I suppose. Well, he got what he deserved. Do you know him? Good Lord, no. I, I, I just wondered if he was dead. He's alive, all right. What happened to him? Like I said, he fell into my trap. What are you talking about, trap? A trap to catch the cleverest cracksman that ever was. Well, look, that's what I want to know. Shall I tell him, Jethro? Well, it's for you to say or not to say, Barney. Well, ain't it, you don't ain't it bully? Ain't it bully? It's the dandiest thing you ever heard. Just to think I only got to invent a trap to catch a crook, and along comes a crook and walks right into it. You, sonny boy, you remember the other night when you were here with the other sport? I told you I'd gotten one, and you wanted to know all about it. Yes, yes, we... We, we had a wager between ourselves on what it was. Ah, uh, did you? Well, at the time, you wanted to know too much, so I figured you could go on wanting. But I gotta tell you now, or else bust. Well, go <laughs> on, then. Well, you see that whiskey decanter on the table there? I've been looking at it for some time now. You don't know what a turn it gave me seeing them on the floor. Otherwise, you'd have asked me to have a little something. Whiskey? Yes, please. I will have a whiskey now you mention it. There you go, my darling. Thank you. I take it for my health, you know. Best thing for your health. Aren't you going to have some? I certainly am. To drink eternal confusion to my enemies. And may they all get caught as easily as him. I'll drink to that, Barney. And a big one for Jethro, who got me the poison from an Indian out west. That's all my trap is. The whiskey is hocused. Not that whiskey, my darling. <coughs> but the one on the table there. The one that he drank out of. Oh. Well, you might have said something sooner. Give me a turn like that when you didn't need to. That's my trap for crooks and cracksmen. But the canter there on the table lying in full view and convenient to the hand. With a silver label around its neck to show that it's poisoned. To show me. Because I'm the only one that knows. Well, except Jethro here. <laughs> That's so, Barney. <laughs> Looks just the same as this. Tastes just the same. You wouldn't know the difference till you woke up in your tracks. A real Mickey Finn, this poison. Why did knock a man out even better than one of my fists? Good heavens, what a filthy trick! I agree with you. But I reckon I'm entitled to defend myself against crooks any way I please, ain't that so? Yes. And 99 crooks out of 100? Seeing a bottle of liquor handy will want to have a snort or two before they go to work. Well, I wouldn't count on that, Barney. The snort may have come afterwards. Meaning what? Well, meaning have you looked around to see if your trophies are safe? Well, not yet. Why? You can save yourself the trouble. Light and blister. Yeah! Don't do that! Why not? Play it light, Barney. The man's drugged as well as He'd be lucky if he ever gets up. Curse him! I should judge it's about time to send for the police. Not till I finish what I... Now, what do you say? You're an Englishman. You invented the rules. Is it the police, or do we let Barney smash them? Oh. Wait until it comes to. So he can feel it. I'll punch his face into a jam pudding. He washed down his teeth with his blood, and the coppers can have what's left. The police, I think, now. Oh, you make me feel quite ill talking like that. I wish you wouldn't be more vulgar than you can help. Yeah, drink your whiskey, sweetheart, and stop talking through your hat. Oh, I like that. Hey, what happened to the phone? I guess our friend here was trying to make a call when he was knocked out by the drink. Yeah, would you mind pouring me another glass of scotch? Of course. Well, there's so much going on, I really didn't taste that first one. Of course. From I the good who decanter. He was ringing up. Well, who could he be calling? Well, it'll all come out. They'll tell us down at the central. Will they? Well, of course they will. They keep a record of all the calls, Barney. They'll, they'll tell us the phone number and the name and the address of the caller. Oh, we'll find out easy enough. I, I wonder... What? I wonder if he telephoned me. You, Sonny? Why should he be doing that? 
I don't know. Well, what could he know about you? Uh, or what could you know about him? Nothing. No, I, I just wondered. What? Well, stop wondering. Because someone did telephone me about an hour ago. I thought it was Raffles. I, I told you I expected to find him here. Do you remember I told you that? Well, but I don't see what all that's got to do with this here crook. Give us a drink. No, neither do I. What the hell? Why, were you, were you cut off sudden? Yes. Yes, so suddenly that I never really realized who it was. That's why I wondered. <laughs> and you thought maybe it was Raffles, huh? Yeah. Drink? No, thank you. Not for me. What's that? You won't have a drink in my house? Forgive me. That's not being a good boy, Sonny. I've been dining out with Swigger Morrison. I've had my whack. Really, I have. Listen, Sonny. I like you, but I shan't like you any if you don't have a drink. Now, give him a drink. Look, now, while you're here, you better do what Mr. McGuire says. Very well. Just one finger. No. Not so much, please. Thank you. Well, even, even if it was this crook that called you, I don't see why you, you thought it was your friend Raffles. Well? Drink up. Um, I, uh, I, I was rather drunk. I'd been dining out with Swigger Morrison. Uh, and Raffles was the first person who occurred to me when the telephone rang. See, we're both on the telephone, and I, I don't know anyone else who is. And I was expecting to hear from Raffles because we'd made a bet. Oh, well, oh, what kind of a bet? About the very thing we've just had explained to us. I was sure it was a man trap, Maguire meant. Raffles was sure it was something else. We had a bet about it. I put my money on the man trap. Raffles put his on the other thing. And Raffles was right. It wasn't a man trap. But it was every bit as good. Every little bit. And the whole boiling lot of you are caught in it except me. Raffles, hey. Raffles, wake up. Hey. Wake up, for God's sake. Mm. You've got to wake up. No. Raffles. Mm. Sorry. Mm. Sorry about this, but believe me, you'll be grateful uh. afterwards. Um, mm. I'm going to twist your wrists. Uh, uh, good. Uh, yes, the other one. Uh, uh, oh, good. Water. Uh, Had some water. Uh, 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 Raffles. Uh, 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 Hello, Bunny. Hello, Raffles. Uh, you, you... You came. Yes. And... It, I knew you would. Of course I did. Uh, hey, what, what about the others? They'll be here in a minute. No, no, they won't. Look, look. What do you mean? Uh, okay. <laughs> <coughs> uh, how much of the... They had, Bunny? Two glasses, each a good three fingers. Uh, well, then we won't need to... Talk in whispers, and we won't uh, need to walk about on. Ah, oh, oh. oh. I dreamed somebody was kicking me in the ribs. Uh, I think it must have been true. Yes, and you can guess which one it was. And the beast is uh, jolly well served. Yes. Oh. Yes. Jolly well served for some time to come, I should think. Ooh, he'll be safe until the forenoon. Oh, unless they bring a doctor to him. Oh. How much of that stuff do you suppose I had? And it's not me cold for more, more, than, more than an hour. A tablespoonful? No, no, a teaspoonful. Less than a teaspoonful. I guessed what it was, but I had to make sure. And the minute I was sure, I swapped the two decanters over and I put the label on the other one. The next minute, I could hardly keep my eyes open and I knew I'd been poisoned by some subtle drug, but my, my legs were going. I could hardly stand up. So you telephoned me? Uh, yes. Thank heavens you did. Uh, I don't remember much about it. I was more asleep than awake. I thought it was Maguire who'd sneaked in and knocked you out. You saw that, and yet you came like a shot to do battle with Barney Maguire, the heavyweight champion of America. 
Well, over the world now, I suppose. You'd do the same for me? Oh, yes. I suppose I would. Are you all right? Really? That stuff doesn't leave an after effect. Well, I've got a thundering great headache, if that's what you mean, but that's of no consequence. I'm as happy as a sandboy not to be handed over to the police. Or beaten up by Maguire. Well, he was going to beat me up, was he? Yes, he said so. Well, thank the Lord I avoided that. That might have made me even more unrecognisable. He didn't recognise me, did he? No, no, not for a moment. Good. Then I am s oh, safe and I'm free. And I have my revenge on it. <laughs> and I shall take the greatest pleasure in melting down his silver statuette done by a famous sculptor. And we can have dinner on the gold brick presented by the citizens of Sacramento. A big one. <laughs> Hooray! So big the belt won't fit us. You ready? Let's go. What? All we've got to do is walk out the door. No, Bunny. But... Oh. I'm sorry, Bunny. You have to stay here. Yes, yes, I'm afraid that's so. What plausible reason can there be for you letting me escape without being my accomplice? Of course I've got it! What? You drank some of the stuff too. Not as much as they did, but you fell asleep. Splendid, and they were pressing it on me at the end. Maguire was going to be very cross with me if I wouldn't drink with them. I almost did. Here's my glass. I very nearly took a swig. Well, thank the Lord you didn't. We'll pour just a drop of it away. They won't remember how much you have, but it's important to pay attention to details. Jethro was the last one awake. He was staring at me as I had the glass raised to my lips. And you drank just a bit, and you fell asleep. Naturally, having had such a small dose, you were the first one to come to yourself. And when you did, I had flown. So had the silver statuette, the jeweled belt, and the gold brick presented by the citizens of Sacramento. Yes. Now, you find yourself in this situation. You are the only one awake. What do you do? Um, I, I try to rouse them. You try, and you don't succeed. What do you do now? Uh... Well, what is the one and only innocent thing for you to do under the circumstances? Send for the police? Yes. Or well, must I? Bunny, you've been so brave till now. Mm. Well, they're quite the nicest fellows. They really are. That is, if you haven't done anything criminal. And you haven't. Didn't I? Well, let a burglar escape while you were asleep. It wasn't your fault, and that's all. That is absolutely all. But I shall have to lie to them. It's the most convincing story. I mean, there's not a loophole in it. Oh. Except perhaps one. You mean they'll find out that you telephoned me? No, why should they suppose I telephoned to anyone? I see I managed to replace the receiver. That was really rather intelligent of me, considering the state I was in. Raffles. Yes. You did not replace the receiver. What? You just dropped it. Oh, no. It was dangling. Oh, hell! Jethro put it back. And he wondered who you, the burglar, had been telephoning. And Jethro's not going to forget that. Oh. Damnation! That really has torn it. And I'm afraid I gave something away. Gave something away? What? I'm sorry. Out with it. You see, you did not replace the receiver, and Jethro noticed it. And he's quite an intelligent fellow. He seemed so quick to spot the possibilities. He knew they would have a record of the phone call at the telephone exchange. So I thought it best to take the bull by the horns and own that I had been telephoned by somebody. Uh-huh. And to be perfectly honest, I even went as far as to say I thought it was Raffles who had telephoned me. You did Well, I had to think of somebody. What could I say? Oh, yes, but to say it. Well, I only said I thought it was you. And I could see they weren't going to recognize you in your rags. There was no idea of you being the burglar. And I, I told them a yarn about having had a bet with you about what the trap was. And I, I'd already told them that I half expected to find you here, so it all fitted together. I, I, and it made the bit about the telephone. Fit in rather well, too. I should say it did, Bunny. I couldn't have done better myself. Really? You will forgive me saying that never in your life have you done half so well. You've saved my bacon, Bunny. Do you really think so? Well, you know me, Bunny. I wouldn't say it if I didn't think it. Oh, yes. But that still leaves us with one problem to solve, and there is precious little time for thought as well as action. <laughs> we light in a couple of hours. Well, wait one of them before you telephone to the police. Wait two, if you like. Right. Daybreak will be a good enough time. Okay. If there's only one thing for it, Bunny, we'll have to divide the labour. You deal with the police. Leave the rest to me. <laughs> Yes, thank you. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, could, could you give me the name and address, please, of uh, uh, of the person who has that telephone number? Uh, yes. Yes. I'll wait. 
Yes, I don't mind waiting. <laughs> yeah, oh, good. Right, we're ready when you are. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, could you spell that, just to make sure? Uh, yes. Yeah. And the address? Yes, uh, uh, right, got that. Thank you very much. No, that's all for the moment. Yeah, most grateful. Ta-ta. <laughs> well, that's good. Good? Yeah. They've, uh, they've confirmed that uh, it was you that was telephoned from here. Well, that's what I told you. Uh, well, yes, sir, but they, uh, they've confirmed that you were telling the truth. Well, did you need that confirmation? Well, people don't always tell the truth to us, sir. Now then, uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, could, could, you, could you tell me about the telephone conversation, sir? I've told you already. Uh, well, uh, uh, would you mind just going through it again, sir? A, a bit more carefully, sort of step by step. If I must. Uh, well, I'd be very grateful, sir. Well, I got back to my flat about one in the morning or so. I'd been dining with Sir Swigger, Sir Syriac Morrison. Oh, yes, sir. We know him. Well, the telephone rang and I answered it. Oh, and uh, what did you say, uh, if you remember? Yes, I do. Good. I said, hello. Hello. That's right, just hello. Uh, uh, and what did he say? Uh, he said, is that you, but? Is that you, but? Uh, w w what did he mean by that, sir? No, I, I, I was going to say he said, is that you, Bunny? But then I realized he couldn't have said that because he didn't know my name. My nickname was Bunny. Couldn't he have, sir? No, not, not unless he, he'd heard people calling me it. Possible, sir. Well, I suppose, sir, but highly unlikely. Yeah. Uh, su supposing you just uh, tell me what you remember, sir, instead of uh, correcting it in the light of what you realised later. Now, he said to you, uh, is that bunny? No, no, he, he said, is, is that you? And I added the bunny in my imagination because I, I, I thought it would be my old friend Raffles, but, but I wasn't sure. So I said, are you Raffles? Are you Raffles? I think it was, yes, are you Raffles? Uh, why did you think it was your old friend Raffles? Well, he, he, he's the kind of person who, who, who would quite likely telephone me in the middle of the night. Uh, he, he's a very old friend, is yes, he? Yes, he is. Your best friend, you'd call him? Yes, yes, my, my best friend. Yeah. And, and he telephones you a lot? Yes, yes, why? And you can't recognize what is and what is not his voice on the telephone. Ah. Yes, well, well that's just it, you see. I, I thought it would be Raffles, but it didn't sound like him, and of course it wasn't. It must have been the burglar, the chap who burgled this place. Uh, uh, may, may we uh, get back to just plain remembering, sir? Oh, right. Now, you asked him if he was Raffles, and he said... He said, I, I want you quick. Come here. Uh, uh, and, and you said? Um, what's happened? Where are you? Some, something like that. Uh, but you, you didn't pursue the question as to whether he was Raffles or not? No. No. Well, that's what I'd have done, sir, if I'd have been you. Oh, would you? Now, um, at what exact stage, sir, um, did you stop thinking it was Raffles and realise that it was the burglar? Sergeant Thompson? Y yes. Yeah. Can, can I go now? Uh, just a minute, sir. Is he all right? He is a, you know, fit. Well, very well, 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 What about those? You'll take a little bit longer. Yeah, well, come if you just right. keep an eye on them, I'll be ready. Right. 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 Uh, can I go now? Uh, uh, not just at the moment, sir, if you don't mind. Well, I do mind. I'm fagged uh, out. Well, I'm sorry, sir. You don't understand. I, ha I haven't had a wink of sleep. What's that, sir? I haven't had a wink of sleep all night. Uh, w would you mind repeating that, sir? Oh, certainly. Why? Oh. All night. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, apart from the unconsciousness resulting from my drinking the drugged whiskey, I don't count that as sleep. It's mere insensibility. It didn't do me any good like sleep does. I see, sir. I want to get some real sleep. Well, just one or two more questions, if you don't mind, sir. All right. Now, sir, um, do you know any burglars? I mean, uh, friends, acquaintances, 
Uh, I mean, you, you don't dabble in the underworld like some gentlemen. What do you do. take me for? No. Well, it was just a question, yes, sir. It was a very impertinent one. Yeah, well, I was only trying to uh, find a... Uh, well, something of a logical reason for uh, really what must be just a, a, an accidental coincidence, sir. What's that? Uh, well, now, you told me that when you first met Mr. Maguire at the International Sporting Club, uh, he was boasting about the trophies that had been presented to him. Yes. Yes, well, now, particularly you mentioned a jewel belt, a gold brick, and a silver statuette. Th that's right. Yes. And Mr. Maguire brought you round here and showed you those things. Yes, he yes. did. Uh, you and another gentleman. Yes, me and, and my friend Mr. Raffles. Yes. Well, um, <coughs> none of those things can be found, I'm afraid, sir. Well, what? Sergeant Thompson. Yes. It's for you. Yeah, it's uh, Bristow. Yeah, well, there must be some uh, other just explanation. Save it for a moment, if you will, sir. Uh, uh, <coughs> Hello, uh, Sergeant Thompson here. Uh, what? Yes. Uh, I, I see. Yes, yes, I, I will. Uh, look, where, where are you exactly? Uh, right. Uh, <coughs> uh, you want to get some sleep, sir? Yes. Well, I have no more questions for you at the moment. Oh, thank heavens. Can, can I go? Uh, you're going to your flat? Yes. In Mount Street? Yes, why? Uh, well, it's only just round the corner, sir. I'll uh, come along with you. Actually, I thought of calling in at the Albany first. Uh, for what reason, sir? Uh, just to see my old friend Raffles, tell him what's happened, because he'd be quite interested. Well, you know, I'd be interested to meet your old friend Raffles. So I'll come along with you, if you don't mind. After you, sir. Back soon. <laughs> I've had rooms here for years. It's where I'd live myself, sir. <clears throat> if I was a single gentleman and I could afford it. Good morning, sir. Haven't seen Mr. Raffles, have you? Yes. You're only this morning. I hope you hope he's out. Hello, but what on earth are you doing in the evening dress at this hour of the morning? Come on in, have a bite of it. Hello, oh, this is Sergeant Thompson of Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard, eh? Well, do come in. Yeah, thank you, sir. What have you been up to, Bunny? You haven't brought him here to arrest him, have you? <laughs> no, no, he just sort of came along with me. Oh, I see. Uh, well, uh, do come in. Yeah, yeah, if it's all right, sir, I'd just like to use your telephone. Yes, of course. Well, thank you very much, sir. J just to let the office know where I am. Yeah. Come in, uh, I'll, I'll join you in a minute. Well, what's uh, happened? Is everything all right? I haven't yet thought of a reason for the telephone call. And he's going on about the three things that Maguire boasted about to us are the three things that have been pinched. Good point. He seems to think it's a bit fishy. Yeah, so would I if I were him. Only reason I brought him here. Yes, why did you? He's going to go with me to my flat. Well, well, I don't let him in there. He's full of half a... Silver you've pinched. Family silver, but it's certainly not my family. But it's all under lock and key and a special Brahma lock fitted to the bottom drawer of your cupboard. But all the same. What, you're afraid you'd blush guiltily? Well, I'm not made of brass. Pity. So we must try and stop Sergeant Thompson from visiting your flowers. Please. Ah, th thank you for the use of your telephone, sir. Not at all. Uh, I, uh, I expect it gave you time to tell him what happened. Yes. <laughs> well, in that case, we'd... Uh... Better get back to your flat in Mount Street. Oh, good idea. I'm sure you're longing to go there, aren't you, Bunny? Huh? If you'll just wait a minute, I'll get dressed and come with you. Uh. Soon be home now, sir. Whatever you've come, sir. Oh, why? You've been entered in the night, sir. What? You was uh, broken into, and the thieves have taken everything they could lay their hands on. Well, I hope they haven't. Yeah, have you reported it? I'm the police. Yes, there's a policeman in there now. It was the milkman that found it out, sir, when he left your half pint. Morning, Sergeant Thompson. Good morning, Bristow. Door forced open with a jemmy, by the look of it. Yes. And sir. quite a bit of other damage. Uh, is it something valuable, sir? Yes, indeed. 
family heirlooms, silver and so uh, forth. Well, uh, perhaps if you'd be so kind to make a list uh, later on of what's gone. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not sure that I can remember everything. I'll help you, Bunny. I think I've seen everything you've got at one time or another. Yes, it'll help us with the recovery, sir. Uh, yes, I see. Yes, they, they probably knew in advance what they wanted and went straight to it. Ah! The explanation of the telephone call. Sir? Well, Maguire's, he told me about it. Oh, yes. Yes, very likely. Yes, that would explain everything, in fact. What would? Uh, well, I saw it before we came here. Uh, not difficult to work out. Uh, I should, uh, I should tell you, sir, that uh, I've known that you was burgled since before we left Maguire's place, but uh, you wanted to go to Mr. Raffles' place and I didn't have the art to stop you. But what would explain everything? Uh, why should a burglar call an innocent gentleman away from home? Why? In order to burgle, of course. Oh. Uh, but why me? Well, sir, let me put it this way. Uh, <clears throat> you told me uh, that uh, you met Mr. Maguire in the first place at the International Sporting Club. Yes, that's right. With me, as it happens. Yeah, with Mr. Raffles. Yeah, well, I don't know whether Mr. Raffles would agree with me, but uh, there's some very queer fish at the International Sporting Club, sir. Very queer fish indeed. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> not to mention the waiters and the servants and people around there. By Jove, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. And then you told me, sir, that uh, you walked back with Mr. Maguire through the streets of London. Yes, we did. Yes. And uh, he bucked about the amount of money he made from fighting, about the trophies he'd got loudly so that people could hear. I think we have to admit, Bunny, that Maguire has a very loud voice. Yes, he has. Yes. And no doubt you, uh, you probably bucked about your own possessions. I... Oh, Bunny, I remember you doing it. Yes, of course. So what happens? What? Well, you're overheard, you're followed, you worked into the scheme and you're robbed on the same night. Oh! Congratulations. Yeah. Brilliant. Of course. Yeah. It's all so clear now. You think so? Clear as pure as crystal. So Maguire's burglar was the same chap who robbed me. Perfectly true. He was. And took my family silver. Any time you want it back, you can have it. <laughs> Do you really think they swallowed the story? It went down as smoothly as an oyster. Then give me another drink, my dear fellow, and let me push on to Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? to give a false description of what was taken from my cupboard. A false description? My dear Bunny, you have no more to learn from me. Time was when I wouldn't have let you go alone to Scotland Yard to retrieve a lost umbrella, let alone a lost cause. My dear fellow. My dear fellow. <laughs>